We have set up an artboard in Photopea. I'm going to demonstrate how to do it again. So I'm going to close this one. I have saved it. <laughs> but let's make a new project, OK? And I'm going to use the same name. So Carl exercise one dash free. And then I want to make sure that this says inches, not pixels. Pixels is, is the default. So you change it to a physical format of inches. Then you type in eight inches by 10 inches. And then you type in where it says DPI, which it should say PPI because it's pixels per inch. And you don't change that. You don't want centimeters because we don't mess with centimeters. Uh, you want it to be 350 pixels per inch with a white background. Once you do that, before you hit create, because this is a glitch in Photopea, click off of it, just onto the gray here, and make sure all those things stay what you want. If they don't change them to what you want, click off, and then they'll stay. And then hit create. If you don't see your rulers, you can go to view, and rulers. So it's either checked or unchecked. It seems like when you're using Safari, if you do Command plus R, which is the shortcut, it does something with the Safari tabs. So don't, don't do that. <laughs> Instead, just use the dropdown. But it's going to be different on different browsers. Photopea is going to work on Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Now, what I want you to notice with the rulers is if you have pixels that are more than 1,000, right? And you should. You should have 2,800 2, pixels wide by 3,500 pixels long. That is what 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch is. If you ever need to change it or check it, so this is important, we'll be doing this a lot, you click on image and then image size. This is true in Photopea, it's true in Photoshop. And that will show you all of your settings. And if you need to change them, you can change them there. Here's the thing. This is our artboard or in what Photoshop calls the canvas. So whatever resolution this is, anything we bring into it is going to be forced to that resolution. So we don't want this too small. Otherwise, it ruins all of our high quality reference. All right, now that we're ready, this is like my piece of paper taped to my table. Now I'm just going to start dragging and dropping my sources onto it. And because I was selected on the background, Photo P is weird sometimes. It moved it and it moved it in, but it moved it underneath my background layer. I don't know why, but I just drag it and I move it up above. <laughs> and then if I do it with this, it puts it on top. And then if I do it with this, it puts it on top. Now, not all of these are perfect, right? This one had a watermark in it. I'm actually going to exaggerate that so you can see. In order to do that, I have to rasterize it. I'll tell you more about that. Then I'm going to do an adjustment. This is all stuff we'll go over beginning of next class. But I'm going to try to get the, the watermark to show up on the projector for you. So there it goes. It shows up a little bit. I'll zoom in, Command Plus. So you see those watermarks? I, I can show you how to get rid of those, right? But you want to be aware that they're there. Okay, also notice whenever I bring in a new ob a new drawing, it covers up the old one. And that's because not all of these are just line art. Some of them are line art with the white pixels around it. And that's because they're JPEGs, not PNGs. But I'm going to go ahead and drop all of them on, even if it's more than five. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that that last one that was a PNG from Pixabay. And when I brought that on, it didn't have any white. That's because PNG files are online image files, but they can support transparency. Transparency is empty space, right? So if you ever have a logo and you need to put it on a website and you don't want it to fill a rectangle with white space, you need to save it as a PNG. How can I get rid of the white space of the others? or at least make it so I don't see it, because I want the white background. So I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to set it. I'm going to select the layer so it's highlighted gray, where it says normal. This is what's called a blending mode. 
It's how this layer blends with other layers. Instead of normal, where it just shows me every pixel at 100%, I'm going to change it to multiply. And this will reveal the beginning of my teaching and my age. But when I taught, before we had digital projectors, we had overhead projectors, right? And if you wanted something to be on an overhead projector, it had to be on transparency. So you had to use markers on transparency, right? Multiply will turn your, your folders into transparency. And I just did that to this one, but you can't tell because there's nothing underneath it, right? But when I do it to this one, change it from normal to multiply, now it's like two transparencies are on top of each other. So multiply only allows darker pixels to come through. Now this one has a problem, right? And if I want to isolate it, I can just turn off the, um, the eyeball. This one has kind of this, the edges of this sticker and this drop shadow. And I don't want that. So this one has a problem. It has the, uh, the watermark. I'm going to change this one to multiply. And then this one doesn't really have a problem except that it's blue. I have to change that. So all of these things need to be worked with and edited. And it's going to give us lots of practice. But first I'll change them all to multiply. And why not? I'll even change the PNG, which doesn't need it, to multiply. Okay, now because I have multiple layers. Oh, and one layer. I just noticed this. I don't know if you can see it in the projector. Yeah, you can. Good. Uh, it looks like it's white, but it's really off-white, <laughs> right? Off-white is not white, which means if you print it, it's going to print. So we're going to have to fix all of that. But once you have layers in your file in PhotoP, I want you to save it. Because that now requires saving as a PSD file. You don't want to lose these assets. And once you've saved it as a PSD, you don't need to worry about these anymore. Because they're saved in the Photoshop file. You'll keep them but you're not going to have to load them again. They are actually loaded at full resolution inside this program now. So I say to save it, I'm going to say file, save as PSD. And then you want that naming convention, right? So your name and then some description of it. Save it to your desktop. If it's navigating to anywhere else besides your desktop, that makes it harder to find. So the shortcut for that Instead of having to do the drop down and find the desktop, which you can do, the uh, shortcut is to just hit Command D when you're in that navigation for saving. So if I say File, Save As, and if it says something other than desktop, if I just hit Command D, it will say desktop. Command D. So while we're working in class, we want to save everything to our desktop, then we want to organize it at the end. Because I make a mess when I make art. You want it all on the desk, and then you clean it up when you're done. Okay, when I do that, I can hit function F11 to make sure I see it. Right? It should also appear on your desktop. And then once you see it, I want you to right-click it and give it a color. And the color I use is green. Green tells me this is my working file. This is the one I want to start working on. It has all the stuff I need. It can be confusing because it can look very similar to the other stuff. And then at this point, it might be a good idea to make a new folder. So to do that on a Mac, you just right click and click new folder and then give that folder your full name. And then I'm going to put this so I don't confuse it with my morning class. This is the free section. This one is, we'll come up with a better name for our folders next class. This one is the Adobe section, right? And then just like I did for the morning section, like this, where I have my PSDs here, because I did one in Photoshop, one in Photo P, I'm going to move all of my files into that folder. This should really be everything that's on your desktop, except for the hard drive. All your references, everything that relates. Okay, good. Now, to show you how that works, I'm going to hit function F11. And I've successfully saved it. I can close it. I can close it completely. I can go to a different computer completely. Then I can just go to photop.com again. And this time, I can say open from my computer. Or I can just 
find that file, which is here, and I can just drag it in, and it will be right there with everything. I can also, if you're interested, and if you have Photoshop, or if you want to try Photoshop in this lab and sign into your Adobe account, if you just double click on it, because it's a PSD file, the default will be to open it in Photoshop. And in Photoshop, it looks exactly like it does in Photocopy. Now notice what's different between this layer in its little preview icon and my other layers. Yeah. So you guys are using all the vocabulary. So I hear rasterized and smart objects. But what is visibly different between this icon and this icon? Yeah, there's a little square in the corner. You guys see that? When you have that black square in your, your layer preview icon, it means it's what's called a smart object. So let me try something with one of these smart object layers. I'll do the one on the top. Let me try erasing from it. So I'm going to go to the eraser, which is something we'll learn. And then it won't let me, right? So what is a smart object? A smart object references an external file. And you can't edit that file until you do what's called rasterizing it. Rasterizing comes from the term a raster file, which means to turn it into pixels. In this way, we can bring vectors into PhotoP or Photoshop and then rasterize them. But until we rasterize them, we're not able to change them. So how do you rasterize? You can right click and then find rasterize layer as an option it will get rid of that and then you'll be able to do things like erase yes question we brought all these images in we didn't do a lot creatively with them yet right like all of them are just in the same format we haven't erased from them we haven't changed their shape or their size so there's really two things we're going to be doing to these pixels to make them our own like Arturo Herrera does we're going to be cutting things away from them. And we're going to be tr transforming their shape, right? Doing things like warping and stretching and flipping. But first, let's clean them all up and make them clean and black. So, and then rasterize them. Because you can't edit something fully until it's rasterized. So starting with this one, I rasterized it by going right-click and then finding rasterize. And now that little box is gone. That allows me to now use my lasso tool, which is the second tool down. And this is the tool I like to use at this point in the class. It's just nice and basic. You just lasso around what you want, and then you just hit delete. So this is like having an X-Acto knife. If I don't want to worry about the eyes or the nose, like Arturo Herrera with Disney coloring books, I'm just going to cut. And what's interesting is the default for the lasso tool, at least on mine, is that it's additive. Usually I'll have it set here. So whenever you use a tool, the, the tool options are at the top. And I just want it for each instance to be its own instance. And it's okay if it's not perfect, right? This is just an exercise. So if there's little debris left over, go ahead. But then when I click off, it will be a new instance. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. I'm going to turn off that eyeball, turn on the next eyeball. This has to be rasterized, right? Because I want to change these pixels. But let's say I want to change its size and its place even before I rasterize it. You can do it before, you can do it after, but it's better to do it before. Because right now it's a smart object, and so it's referencing my outside file. So if I resize it, which is different than editing it, it will always be the highest quality it can be. So I do that in Safari. Am I using Photoshop right now? I'm using Photoshop right now. I do that in Safari by going up to Edit and then Free Transform on PhotoP. I'm going to quickly save this and bring it back to PhotoP. There are shortcuts, but they don't seem to work in Safari. Now, what's wrong with this? Why did it just get all weird looking? That's because this is just a preview of the original pixels. But this allows me, this transforming, allows me to change its size, allows me to rotate it, and then if I hold down shift, it will allow me to warp it as well. 